All right, YouTube, how's it going? So today I'm going to go over the best settings for Warzone Pacific slash Rebirth Island. I've been uploading these videos on my TikTok lately and it seems to be doing really well. But the problem with TikTok is that it's short form content and there's an awful lot of settings I've had to miss out on. And there's also an awful lot of settings that I haven't really been able to explain as well. And that's where this video comes in. I'm going to go over the best controller settings audio settings and graphic settings if you're on PC and let you know which are the best settings to use. Ultimately, settings are dynamic. It's all down to whatever you prefer and whichever works best for your setup and you as a person. So whereas these settings work for me and there are a lot of settings which, you know, I wouldn't really recommend changing at all. There are still some that are open for debate. I'm going to try to explain to you what these settings do so you can come up with your own preferences and be able to modify these settings yourself. So without further ado, here we go. So first things first, we're in the controller settings here. Now, I don't play mouse and keyboard, so unfortunately I can't help you out with those settings. I'm also going to only try and go over the important ones as well because there's a lot of stuff in here which, you know, I just don't need to go over. For example, invert vertical look. I mean, I just can't think of any reason why anyone will put this on. It kind of goes without saying. So anyway, button layout. I mean, personally, I play claw, so I use default. If you don't play claw, I probably wouldn't recommend playing default or I would get a scuff controller or something like that. But feel free to change this away from default. I only use this just because I play a claw and I can press all the buttons just fine. Now, a dead zone. This one sparked a pretty big debate in my TikTok video. A lot of people seem to disagree with what I was saying. So here's going to be a chance for me to explain it. So essentially what dead zone is, is it's the minimum amount of input you need before your analog stick will register the input. So the lower this is, you will literally only have to touch your analog stick the tiniest ever bit and it will move. Whereas if this is all the way up, you know, you'll have to move your analog stick quite a lot before it gets detected. And now I play on 0.15 for the minimum input, which is actually quite high. And now the reason why I do that is because as you can see here, I actually use a high rise control freak. Now my analog stick is a little bit higher up. So if I touch it just a tiny bit, it, it, it's essentially a lot more sensitive to movement. So I like to put this up a little bit higher so again this is another setting which is kind of going to depend on you and which one you prefer but i will always say lower is better generally the lower you can go and the lower you can handle is the more ideal situation here and max input just leave this as high as it goes it's not really important now sensitivity this is quite another controversial one on my tiktok and um, i said the range should be anywhere between five and nine that's because typically all pro players they tend to play within this range because you don't want your sensitivity too high you want to be able to control it and at the end of the day all that matters is what you prefer if you can you know if you can control Control your sensitivity on 2020 then just play 2020 by all means but you know there's a reason why there's very little people out there who play 2020 i'm not saying there's none but there's just a few. For me personally, I think seven is a sweet spot. There's a lot and lot of other pros I play on seven as well. I also had a lot of people saying that, oh, what if you get shot in the back and you can't spin around? I mean, I mean, if you get shot in the back, you're probably going to die anyway. You shouldn't really be turning your sensitivity up so you can turn on people, you know, who are shooting you in the back because you're going to get loads of flinch and the kind of sensitivity you need to play on to be able to do that and to be able to actually aim it properly before they can kill you in 0.5 seconds. It's just unrealistic. Don't change your sensitivity based on that. Just use whatever you can aim with. You can still turn around fast enough on seven. Um, ADS sensitivity multiplier. Um, I actually use custom sensitivity per zoom instead. Um, as you can see here, I'm using 0.9 for all the lower zooms and then I just use one for everything else. I also do use 0.85 for high zoom. But yeah, I want my sensitivity to be a little bit slower when I aim in. So I turn this down quite a bit so I can control the aim and, you know, stick to people a bit easier. If you want to copy these, feel free. Aim response curve type. Now, I set this to dynamic. I've always played dynamic. I think it's a lot easier to stick to your target. I feel like it makes your aim assist so much better. So if you currently play on standard as it is, definitely I recommend trying out dynamic. All pro players, as far as I know, play on dynamic. I don't know anyone who doesn't. Trust me, give it a go. It's really good. Controller vibration, you want that disabled. If you play with controller vibration enabled, I honestly just don't know how you do it. I think it's very annoying and it just gets in the way. So disabled for me. Aim assist, you want this on standard. I've played around with all these other... I've played around with all these other options and I just, I, I don't think anything beats standard. I think standard is by far the best way to go. Now, scale aim assist with field of view. This is possibly the most controversial setting in the whole of Warzone. Now, I've been using disabled for the longest time, always through Verdansk. Um, I used to swear by it. I used to think enabled gave me less aim assist and stuff like that. And and honestly, I don't know. I, I feel like with Caldera, it's just so much different. Um, I feel like you lose aim assist a lot. I feel like there's a lot of parts on the map where you just get no aim assist and stuff like that. Well, like... No aim assist at all there, like. And so I've been trying it out with enabled. I've always stuck with disabled personally. I'm just literally testing this out. I, I, I still do think disabled's better personally. So yeah, I would recommend disabled, but everyone's going to recommend you something different on that one. And um, the rest of these settings here are all not really important. Um, Apart from use slash reload behavior, you want that on contextual tab. This is so when you're looting and stuff like that, you can just literally press square once. You don't need to hold it in. You can pick things up really quick. It'll be a bit weird when you get in a helicopter and you try and reload and stuff like that, but you'll get used to it, trust me. Um, I'm a player behavior. I, I've always had this on apply one. A lot of people on my TikTok were kind of uh, angry at this one that I didn't put apply all on, but 
for me personally, I've always had a ply one. Like I said, I'll play claw and I can easily press triangle to put another plate on as and when I need to. So it doesn't really bother me. But if you're not really in that position where pressing triangles not quite as comfortable for you, just stick it on a ply all. And to be honest, a ply all is probably better anyway. I've just always stuck with this, so I don't want to change it. Slide behavior on top. This is very important. You don't want no delay when you're sliding. This will help you to be able to slide cancel just like the pros do. Um, auto move forward. I, I've, I've never put that on. I don't really want that on, to be honest. Sometimes you just want to sit still. Tactical sprint, double tap. You know, I, I don't really use this setting because as you see here, I use automatic tactical sprint. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but it helps with your movement so much. It fe I, I feel like I'm always moving and that's what you want in Warzone. And then parachute auto deploy. You know, you want that disabled as well because you want to be able to pull your parachute a little bit closer to the ground, especially if you're racing for a helicopter or something like that. You want it on disabled. So moving on to audio settings. Now, this one, of course, is um, very dependent on the kind of headset you have and the audio setup you have. Now, I play on PC and I have a Go XLR mix amp where I have sliders and I can change volume of everything. Now, through Windows, I have my volume set to 100. And on my Go XLR, my volume is roughly around the 80% mark. So with that being said, my master volume is only on 20. I don't recommend having it any higher than 60 though. Like if you're playing it on 100, it's just going to be blowing your ears off. Turn your master volume down, turn your headset up. That's a better way to do it. Audio mix, boost high or boost low. You don't want anything else. These are the best two. Again, it's another one that's really highly debated. I've always preferred boost high. Boost low does actually make footsteps a bit louder. But the main problem with boost low is I think it increases the ambient sounds a bit too much. And I think it makes the footsteps harder to focus on. Although, yes, they are louder. I think it makes everything else louder as well, which I don't really like. Music volume, zero. I don't want to see anyone with this on anything other than zero. Dialogue volume. Now, this is when they call in that there's someone dropping on you or there's a UAV being called in or something like that. So you don't want it off. But at the same time, you don't need it really high up. You still want to hear when a UAV gets called in but it doesn't need to be a priority. So I set it to 35. Effects volume, 100. I'm not exactly sure what this even does. Cinematic volume. I mean, this only affects campaign anyway. Hit market sound effects. Now I've always used classic just because, uh, you know, nostalgic effect of it, I guess. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. There's no competitive difference to it. And um, voice chat, of course, this is all, you know, very dependent on you. But one thing is for sure, I would definitely not have voice chat volume like significantly higher than your master volume i only have mine on 29 that's more than loud enough to hear everyone around me if you get those people with quiet mics just get them to turn it up you don't want your voice chat volume on like three four hundred and stuff like that because it's just going to absolutely rupture eardrums you want to be able to focus on the footsteps you can still hear your friends even if you turn them down trust me war tracks i mean just get that off you ain't going to hear anything with 80s music blaring through your ears let me tell you that Okay, well, finally, we've got the graphic settings. Now, I play a full screen borderless because I've got a very good PC. To me, there is absolutely no difference whatsoever between playing on full screen and full screen borderless for my PC. Now, a lot of people do seem to have a problem where, you know, if they play full screen borderless, the game gets a bit laggy. But for me, it makes zero difference whatsoever. Render resolution 100 because I play 1080p. Now, custom frame rate limit. This is this one's actually quite important. If you want to have the gameplay limit as high as it can go, don't worry about putting a limit on that. But menu, put it to 60 and out of focus, put it to 30. If you look at the top left there, my GPU is only at 49 degrees, 50 degrees. And that's if, if I was to have this really high, my game would just be overperforming in the menus and it'll just cause unnecessary heat to come out my PC. It's just not worth it. Brightness, this one all depends on your monitor, really. My monitor is really bright as it is. And I'm also going to go over some NVIDIA control panel settings for you, which let's just say this will cover brightness so I, I just leave my brightness normal here nvidia reflex low latency definitely put this enable plus boost it makes a big difference okay so quality i have my field of view at 110 kind of just down to preference this one but i think 120 is just way too zoomed out and i can't handle it so 110 for me camera movement least definitely i'm not even convinced this setting works but put it on least anyway why not now streaming quality you want this on low anything higher it's just it's just going to cause a lot of stutter a lot of lag and you're going to drop fps and this is a kind of game where you can't afford to drop fps on texture resolution very low trust me it doesn't really matter that much putting it on very low you can set it to low if you really want to but it doesn't make that much of a difference just set it to very low and get the extra boost in performance texture filter anisotropic um I've, I've got this on high kind of helps with clarity and stuff like that and it also pretty good for fps too it doesn't really affect it at all particle quality low now i was once told that setting it to high actually increases fps but i've since kind of uh changed sides on this one i guess we could say um i've got i've got this set to low now bullet impacts and sprays now i've got this set to disabled apparently this does actually increase your fps and ever since turning them off i can't actually say i've even noticed having them turned off you can still see where your bullet hits anyway i mean it's up to you you can leave it enabled if you want it's probably not going to make too much of a difference on your fps tessellation disabled no one really cares about that on-demand text streaming make sure this is turned off this causes so much lag it gets in the way so much so make sure this is off you do not want this on in 
any scenario. Now in the post-processing effects, I have my Filmix strength on 1.0 and that is because I use anti-aliasing at SMAAT2X. I've tried using this off and I just think the game is so hard to see. So I, I've kind of played around with some of the settings and I think this one's the best, especially combined with the NVIDIA control panel settings I'm going to show you. I think this is like the best way for visibility. Depth of field, disabled, you don't want that on. And then obviously motion blurs and stuff like that, you want that disabled as well. I think you actually do get this setting on console as well, which starts off on by default. I mean, definitely, definitely get it off. Shadow map resolution, low. I mean, you, you don't need high quality shadows. It doesn't really matter. I've got both these uh, cast shadows on enabled. I think it actually increases your frames if you do it this way. Particle lighting on low. Ray tracing, I mean, I've got that on disabled, but honestly, I, I don't really think it's going to make a difference at all, even if it's enabled. I'm not even convinced this game even supports it, to be honest with you. I just keep it off. It's not going to help your FPS in any way. Ambient occlusion, you want that disabled. And then whatever this is, disable that one as well. Okay, now let's talk about the NVIDIA control panel. Now, to me, this is the most important thing you can do. By default, Warzone just looks really ugly. It's really hard to see. And if you go into here, here, the NVIDIA control panel, I'll show you what to do to make it look a lot better. There's loads of settings you can change here in the 3D section stuff, but if you want to copy what I've got, I will just quickly scroll through them now while I'm talking and you can just literally just copy them down. It does make a tiny bit of difference, but I wouldn't really worry about it too much. But the most important thing I want to show you is in the display section here, it just desktop color settings, go into that and just copy these settings I've got here. It's hard to show you what difference this is because it's only really on your monitor where you'll see it, but it'll just make your game so much brighter, so much clearer, and just it'll just look so much better. You'll be able to see people a lot easier. So yeah, definitely copy that down. Okay, and so I've just noticed I actually forgot to do an outro for the video. So I'm going to quickly fire one together now. So if you enjoyed, please do leave a like. If this helped you out at all as well, please leave a like and drop me a sub. That would be really appreciated, of course. Should hopefully have another video coming out tomorrow. I've got a nice 30 bomb on Rebirth Island with the Owen gun, which I'm going to try and upload. I won't have a face cam, unfortunately unfortunately, but you know, it's still a great gameplay anyway. So yeah, you've got that to look forward to. And in the meantime, that's going to be all from this video. And I'll catch you in the next one.